Welcome everyone to the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining me today is Lucas, co-founder and CTO of Documenso, the open source document signing platform. Lucas, thank you so much for joining. Super excited to do this. And uh, let's kick it off with some information about your background and how you met Timur and how you guys started Documenso. Yeah, no worries. So I'm Lucas, co-founder of Documenso, unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I've been a developer for a little while. I lose track. I've been coding for um, a very long time now, since I was like 13 uh, with PHP and all that junk. Um, I've worked across government, telecoms, um, startups, uh, e-commerce, and basically everywhere else in between. I have like a side project where I do a complete restaurant system for my wife. Um, I just love code. And during that time, I've worked extensively with PDFs, unfortunately. So when Timo found me and reached out and said, hey, would you like to work on document signing, which involves ex- even more PDF work? I was like, oh, yeah, sign me up, you know. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank, thanks so much. And there was a, a little roast involved that you did online. Um, when I- yeah. Yeah. So um, what had happened was um, I had reviewed the Calcom code base just as a little Twitter growth hack or whatever you might call it. <laughs> um, and also just out of my own interest. And then after that, I found it to be such a fun experience. I was like, all right, maybe I'll make myself available for people to book code roastings where I'll walk through their code base and I'll let them know what I find. And so I posted it and nothing happened because realistically, who wants someone to go through their code base and tell them everything they don't like? Um, but then Tim, I reached out and ended up booking one. So I did that. Uh, we got talking after it. I started as a contributor for a little bit, just, um, helping out where I can before we moved on to a co-foundership, mm-hmm. um, where I helped us launch our 0.9 version, adding billing and a few other fun little features. And then we went straight into raising. And then, uh, right after that, I was like, all right, let's do ourselves a rewrite because, rewrite. <laughs> you know, that's never gone wrong. Uh, that's, uh, that sums it up nicely. And you guys still haven't met in person, right? No, no. We hopefully will this year, uh, 2024 will be the year of in-person globally distributed remote. Um, <laughs> exactly. But no, Timur and I just meet up every Monday in the evening, my time, and we have a one hour chat and then everything else is done over text. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, that works uh, with, with Zaf. We also kind of do it the same, although right now we, we managed to get in person. Um, quick, quick hello from Zaf. Very quick hello. Hey, Lucas. <laughs> nice to see you, man. <laughs> and so um, how's, how's the team been uh, expanding, you know, ever since you raised funding and you've been running at it? Yeah, so expanding the team has been pretty fun and interesting, actually. So after we raised our funding, we were able to hire our first um, part-time developer, Duncan. He was a long-time contributor, even predating myself. Um, So being able to turn him into an actual employee and reward him for all the work he's put in was super, super awesome, to be honest. Um, And he's only part-time because he has university right now. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's studying uh, mining engineering. Um, We're super excited for him. And he's just super excited to uh, be doing development instead of mining engineering. But it's very important to us that he also finishes his degree and has the right amount of work to balance the two. Um, After that, we were able to hire one of my friends from Australia who uh, was looking to jump into a new role anyway. And the reason for picking him is simply because I did need someone in my time zone before it became too (laughs) European. Uh, as well as my baby that was due a couple months later, I needed someone that I knew could like hold down the fort while I was sort of out of office. Uh, from there, we were able to move into uh, hiring a lot more globally. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, We expanded our team with Catalan, who's been a super great addition. All of his experience with DevRail plus his uh, developer skills have been absolutely amazing. And then we've been able to hire Adithia, another contributor, and uh, Gutham, our leading designer. So yeah, the team's coming along nicely. We probably might add on one or two more roles in 2024, depending on how the year goes, but certainly not in the immediate future because... The hardest thing about having our globally distributed team across all the time zones is uh, me being the bottleneck, particularly on the development side, getting things into play where they can be worked on by the team, reviewing stuff before it goes out. It all requi- uh, requires me time, and it's been it's been pretty painful, actually. I'm working on getting better at it, so... Until then, we can't really slap another developer at the problem. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure you're exaggerating here, but uh, no, that sounds phenomenal. Uh, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. And always great hearing stories of contributors uh, who become hires. And, and it makes the most sense. You know them already. They know you. They're onboarded to the code base. They're productive from day one. So that is, uh, that is excellent. And the community of documents, so as well as the traction, of the product uh, in the market, uh, if you'd like to uh, discuss this. Yeah, so I think the coolest part is obviously how much the community has grown. Um, We now have quite a few active contributors, which is what I really love to see. Um, When I see, you know, another person raising their fourth, fifth, sixth PR, it's a really nice thing. The hard part about open source, and I guess commercial open source, it can all be very aspirational. So you typically see someone open their first pull request to solve an immediate problem that they have, and then they'll go off. So Mm -hmm. seeing return contributors and seeing them growing over time, I think we've got maybe six to eight now, which is phenomenal, um, with well over 40 contributors in general, I believe. Don't check the numbers. I might be lying. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. That's that's really good. And uh, wishing you uh, more growth in the community and of course in the market too. Uh, In terms of the conversations you're having with people who are uh, using the product in the free version, maybe contemplating a license, like a paid version, and then the go-to-market, if there's anything we can say about the motions you go through there uh, and the distribution of of the product. Yeah, so since launching our paid product, um, we've had some pretty decent uptake. we're not talking rolling in users, but, um, you know, we've got quite a few active subscribers. We have lots and lots of free users that are actually using the platform, which is our most important thing. Um, and we have some power users already, which is really nice to see where they're sending hundreds of documents, um, and whatnot. Unfortunately, we are still a bit early in this space. Um, We have a lot of things rolling out over the next couple weeks to months that will bring us up to par with, uh, you know, the baseline of features that you need to consider us over a different competitor. Uh, Mm -hmm. While we are also going through like the general enterprise leads where we have lots of qualified inbounds that we just need to work on actioning. Um, A major thing for us will be doing our... uh, 21 CFR compliance, which will let us break yes. into a lot of med tech industries who are desperately seeking a DocuSign alternative because um, when you see the bills for like these uh, companies, they're paying for X envelopes and then they have like a whole laundry list of extra features where it'll be like support during 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and then they have certain compliance levels on each envelope and that's an additional line item. Like we just want to create, uh, you know, a full featured product that has less of this billing confusion. You pay, you know, a certain price that we determine as we do our enterprise lead with you. And then that's it. You don't really have to think about it until it's renewal time. There's no additional add on and add on and add on and add on. Totally, totally. Uh, good luck exploring this market. Actually, sounds really, really exciting. And then for the for the health tech folks, um, I'm guessing that they would also really want to embed 
um, documents uh, in their own applications and probably with the existing options that's kind of like a pain you would need to get under like, contract and like you know probably never get support and like pretty clunky and lack of apis uh, and so that's that's also i guess an avenue where people are going to benefit a lot with uh, documents so from the experience so far is there any uh, I hope this is a lot, but any piece of advice or maybe a mistake to avoid that you would like to share with uh, other founders or maintainers that are thinking about um, going down the commercial route? Um, yeah, look, it's obviously hard. You're going to constantly be asked, why would I pay for this? I can self-host it, um, which is always a very valid question, particularly if you want to make your product compelling for self-hosters. It's very easy to be open source, but everything's behind a feature flag. We have to have a, you know, a specific license for it. Um, whereas we try to avoid that offering as much as we can, uh, outside of billing, uh, in our self-hosted version. So the real thing you get with us is reliability, um, potentially early access to features and, um, all the compliance levels that we've been working our way through. Um, and then outside of that, yeah, like growing a team is always difficult. Hiring is always interesting as well. Um, particularly when you are hiring from a global talent pool, you mm -hmm. have to take in consideration like cultural, uh, backgrounds and such as well, when you interact with people, okay. um, and all those other norms, like what might seem very weird for me as an Australian can be quite normal for a European or someone located in India. And so you have to take all that in and put on like a smiling face as you try to understand them. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, de de definitely a nuance there and not something you would immediately think about, but it looks like you're conscious of it and uh, accommodating it. So that's, that's, that's super nice. Uh, in terms of launching uh, your experience so far, doing it, going through the motion, uh, you know, announcing the convention on different platforms and then also utilizing social media, and, and Twitter, for example, or x.com, like uh, any, any piece of advice there for people who want to build in public more and grow their presence? Yeah. Um, so this is something that we're still actively working on. Uh, I'd say Documento follows like a sort of a bumpy road between where we're really active on our socials and then we go really inactive. And it will usually depend on if we're in like marketing mode or development mode, like Recently, we've been in development mode, so you'll notice that like most of us haven't posted much apart from, say, Catalan, who's just very excellent at all the social stuff. I've been trying to learn from him as best as I can so we can be a lot more public with what we're doing. Um, but, I mean, honestly, posting on you know X or LinkedIn or wherever and just being consistent with it with actual mm -hmm. insights rather than just filler content. Uh, it's super important. Like some of our best growth metrics have come from when we've really put in the effort to post and be helpful rather than like straight marketing. We're like, look at this, look at that. Instead, we write more about the why, the how, and the what. And you can see the correlation when we look at our like site analytics and whatnot. It really does draw people in, particularly for like an early stage uh, commercial open source uh, project. Uh, being active and letting people know who you are, even if you are shouting it into the void, is like the best thing you can do. Like on the day that we launched our zero point nine version, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen from Dub, previously Vercel, picked us up and created a amazing signing video using our homepage for the demo. Mm -hmm. And it went to like a quarter of a million views and everything just went skyrocketing from there on the day. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, really just shouting out because you never know who's going to see it. Um, and even if no one does see it, if you get into the habit of doing it, it's just like any other muscle, eventually you'll make your own luck. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, super helpful for me to, to, to share and, and, and everyone else, all the other creators. And uh, related note about streaming, um, if there's again any piece of advice here in terms of what you've seen work best and or maybe something to, to avoid. Um, 
Yeah. Um, look for streaming. It's much the same. I think I was <laughs> when I was streaming. Now that I have the child, it's very hard to find the time at the moment. I'm really hoping to get back into it this year because I I liked it both for the um, what do we call the word? Oh my goodness, uh, accountability. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I liked it for the accountability where even if no one was watching me, knowing that someone could jump on and watch me meant that I was more likely to remain focused for longer, which sounds both good and terrible, depending on how you think about it. Um, <laughs> but it's also just good for general transparency too. Like we constantly have contributors asking what like the working process is at Documento or how we do things and being able to just say, look, here's my work day or Here's me streaming for like three hours. Here's how I look at things and here's how I tackle it. Um, will be super beneficial. We have done a little bit of it, but it's something to expand. But I don't think we have to get too formal with what you should do, apart from maybe try and be less Australian. So watch your language while you code. <laughs> um, but yeah, and we are expanding on this too. Like one of my recent thoughts uh, that I'm trying to execute on is when I do a PR review, which is basically where I spend most of my day, um, I'm trying to start recording some of them on YouTube uh, yeah. and then Great. sending them to contributors to let them know what I've actually done. Because if I find a PR that's in the 90% point, I'll usually do the last 10%. That way I'm not coming back to them with like eight different things that are very minor. That's, that's a phenomenal idea. And, uh, and yeah, publishing all these videos on YouTube and as a matter of fact, even the contributors, some of them uploading videos, you know, cause oftentimes they put a video recording on the PR, maybe with Loom or what have you. So them going through that motion and building that muscle and, and sharing their thinking process and their implementation. I could also be beneficial for them, but uh, doing it, but yeah, it's a great idea. Excellent idea. So I'll try to hold you accountable to that or like ping you every now and then, Hey, when's the first one coming? <laughs> so that is, that is excellent. And, uh, I guess related, uh, to the discussion so far in terms of also the, the transparency that comes from, from building in public and sharing, uh, what the work is like, uh, outside of just, you know, sharing the code. Uh, is the fact that you guys are an open startup. Documentation is an open startup. So a, a quick note about this. Uh, yeah. So being an open startup was sort of a no brainer for us. Um, I think the real trick is like, we are open source. Like we shouldn't theoretically have that much to hide, I guess. Um, being founders, we aren't taking like massive salaries or anything. We have a goal to be not the highest paid person on the team. We always want that to be our developers and designers and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, having the open startup lets us track ourselves without needing to build internal dashboards that customers can never see, as well as like provide insight to other people as to how we're doing. Um, so they can see, you know, our general metrics, whether we're growing, flatlining and mm -hmm. so on. And, um, even like customers appreciate it too, because they can see you know, I'm not the only person using this and it doesn't just say trusted by like, you know, 14,000 companies and that might've just come from the template or whatever. Um, it's like real time, more, you know, frequently updated metrics, uh, on every page load. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've previously, like I said, worked in government and such where everything is under lock and key. Like we had certain clearance levels and that meant that everything had to be sent with certain levels of confidentiality and it's just painful. Like if you know something, you should share it and, you know, provided that, well, I guess we at Documento, we don't really have much that we can't share. Obviously like our upcoming enterprise clients and such would be a secret. Mm -hmm. Um, but everything else we want to be as transparent about as possible. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and it does build trust, uh, I believe having that transparency. So it's great to have you as an example of this, um, as an example, a good example to follow, I think. And, uh, we're, we're trying in our own team to make steps in that, uh, direction. Um, I, I wanted to use the opportunity to also ask you about your experience with Algora, the open source bounties platform. Uh, what was your, uh, why did you decide to, to try it in the first place? And then you've been, the commercial has been one of the most active projects on the platform. So how's the experience been so far? Yeah. Um, so 
I got into Elgoro through Cal. So as always, they lead the way. <laughs> um, when I was doing my little code base review for them, I picked up a random PR. It had a bounty attached to it. Um, a week later, I ended up getting paid. It was pretty cool because, you know, instead of doing, well, not necessarily work for free, but the work that I was going to do anyway, um, I was able to get paid and it gives you that really nice feeling like, you know, that you feel rewarded, um, you know, that you feel appreciated. And it's something very specific to say commercial open source as well for the bountying side. Um, but no, it was a super amazing experience. So the moment we had funding and everything else, I said, you know, if we're going to take open source contributors, we should consider how we're going to do bounties and more specifically tips. Um, through our experimentation, we found uh, that bounties are amazing for getting things done quickly, but tipping is probably more sustainable for us personally, because we want to work on a culture where people can take things, work on them, and then come back to us rather than having people race towards something. So if we fire a bounty, we still try and do first come, first served, which can lead to a little bit of um, contention or resentment, I guess. Uh, if someone just instantly pings an issue. So instead we try to focus more on tipping. So if the work comes in, it's nice. We appreciate it. Let's, you know, give you a certain monetary reward and say, Hey, we, you know, we see this, we appreciate it. And here you go. We want to make this sustainable. Like we appreciate you contributing. We are a commercial company, so you don't have to contribute for free per se. But we obviously aren't tipping like every single contribution. Right. Um, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that's a great note. Thank you so much. And I, and I took note of that. Makes a lot of sense how you approach it. And, yeah. and of course, thank you so much for uh, uh, partnering. And, and, you know, it's been a privilege serving you. And I hope we continue on the same path. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what can we expect? if we can touch on it briefly with uh, next releases of documents or potentially when they might be coming, uh, if there's any teaser you could give. Yeah. Um, so we have a full fledged team system coming along with all the bells and whistles, you know, you'll have team members with roles. They'll be able to be transferred. Um, you'll have team emails for like sending, receiving documents, team inboxes. It's going to be, Amazing. Uh, on top of that, we have Catalan working on our API right now. It's had an open PR for a while, just pending me doing a few rounds of reviews and that'll be our little V1 beta. And then people will be able to programmatically send documents, create documents and do all the good stuff that everyone's been begging for, uh, mm -hmm. which we hope will empower a lot of people to start trialing documents. So particularly because the API will be available even with a free account. Um, and then, yeah, outside of that, we have launched templates recently. We are staying a little bit quiet on some of the things that we've shipped because, uh, we hope to do yet another launch week and mm -hmm. maybe the start of February, end of January, where we go over all these features that we have released and, um, how you can use them and what else you can do with them. Awesome. Sounds like a great plan. Thank you so much for sharing. And it sounds like uh, the API big PR review might be one of the first opportunities to do a video doing the PR. Yeah. <laughs> so excellent. Very much looking forward to that. And absolutely will expand uh, the number of people who can easily uh, take documents for a spin and uh, also provide feedback. So very, very exciting. Uh, best of luck. We will be following. And uh, um, unless you have some final notes, notes that you might like to share, I was also hoping to ask you for a quick demo of uh, the Kimenso. Yeah, I mean, just before we jump into the demo, I do want to reiterate that we honestly love Elgora. And even outside of like from a company perspective, on a personal note, I think seeing this change in sustainable open source is like, it's a massive thing. And it goes both ways. So we, as you know, commercial uh, products that are open source, we can tip our contributors and create sustainability that way, which helps develop a more thriving community. And for us, you know, community is the most important path to adoption. 
because we need to build trust. And what better way to do that than to reward the developers that might go back and then promote us to their companies. But also for like uh, larger open source projects like Nuxt and such, uh, if they have like a feature that they need to do, people can tip it or bounty it as well. And the maintainers can pick that up and it helps them avoid like a whole bunch of then like annoying creating a statement of work, going and approaching mm-hmm. you know, whatever large client that actually wants it and then doing it to their meet. Instead, they can start crowdfunding it all through uh, bounties for specific features, which lets you avoid GitHub sponsors where some people will leave it on. It'll be like $5 and it might be a bit, but they'll usually churn after a couple months. Instead, this, you know, a hundred, 200, $500 attached to a specific piece of work that you can get done. Someone else might come in and add to it with the most recent, uh, prettier thing where I think $25,000 went through yeah. to the winner. <laughs> so yeah, seeing that instead of like people having to go and solicit contributions from like, you know, larger companies is really amazing. We are absolute fans of El Gore. We can't wait to see what comes in the next year as well. That's um, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. And of course, it's the community, the maintainers, the founders, and the contributors that make up the platform and what it is. And we're just very lucky to um, to assist everyone in this process. Thank you so much for your kind words. Couldn't have said it better myself. And uh, we'll continue working to to improve the experience for everyone. Um, and uh, with that, I guess, um, I'm, I'm very eager to uh, check out the demo. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I'll just share my screen. And here's a web page I prepared earlier once it comes through. If it comes through. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming in hot. Give it a second. <clears throat> Of course, this would work before the recording and then during the recording. Right. All... <laughs> <laughs> we did do a quick test. Oh, let's see if it works. All right, there you go. All right. Um, so, yeah, we have this. We're not going to sign in with my personal email. Instead, we're going to click sign in with Google on a completely fresh account called Demo User here. I created it just before we started recording this in Google Workspace, so it's never signed in before. Um, and so, yeah, our intention with documents though, is to be like the most painless and slick signing experience you can have. So the idea being that you as a completely new user can go to, you know, the landing page, you can be like, Hey, I like this. You can do single player mode for free if you need to self sign. But if you do need to send a document, you can, you know, sign in, go with Google. Sign in as your brand new user using SSO. And then ideally the email would have been verified from the beginning. Uh, So we might actually have a bug there if someone wants to PR that. So uh, if I go here and I refresh, maybe not, I'll click the verify button. We will be getting rid of this for SSO, by the way, guys. Um, We do want this to be a very painless experience, and this is painful for me. So now that we've verified, if we click back, the app will automatically recognize that. We can upload a document, such as this little receipt that I use for signing. Um, And for those looking at this and wondering about the latency, it's because we host everything in Europe due to GDPR and I am in Australia. So speed of light is really painful (laughs) for me. So yeah, as you can see, I've probably signed this a few too many times. Just call it good old document PDF, attach another scribble to it. We can toss in Lucas at Documento. And we'll put our signature over here and we might add our name underneath. We can customize our signing message uh, using templating as well as the subject that gets sent in the email. And then we're done. Document's been sent and then we can just track it. Um, so if I went to my email, I'd find it there, but I'm a bit lazy today. So I'm just going to click this and get my signing link and then pop it open. 
So now as a person receiving a document, all I have to do is click. Uh, if I was signed in and I had an account, my signature that's attached to my profile would appear here. But because I don't, I can go here and slap on a little scribble. Get our confirmation and now we're all signed. And with that, you can, yeah, go from zero to cent in minutes and hopefully start making deals or signing NDAs or whatever you might want to do with documents. So. Absolutely. And the second person didn't even need to sign up. They just landed on that page and they can sign yeah. up. And then you get your fun little um, hovering card. You can share it on Twitter if you want to. Please do. <laughs> 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 and then if we jump back, we can see that the document's been completed in our account. We can download it. We can uh, duplicate it. We can also share it as an owner. Please do. <laughs> 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 and yeah, so the idea is that we hope to empower people to go from zero to cent. And we hope to do that with our free plan, letting people send uh, five documents per month. Uh, that way it's completely painless for the beginnings of, you know, an early stage company or a freelancer or anyone. And then we want to grow with you. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Love it. Wow. This was very seamless. Um, excellent. I'm very excited to make a clip out of this thing and, and show everyone how easy this was. Amazing. Thank you so much for the demo. It's a privilege getting it from you. <laughs> and, um, uh, this was a really good interview, and it looks like we're uh, a little bit early from uh, the top of uh, our slot. So perhaps any final notes that you might like to add before we prompt people to go check out uh, the comments so and the repository on GitHub and contribute, of course. Um, yeah, no, uh, I think 2024 is going to be a really big year for us. I have very high hopes. We've got a lot of work in flight that we'll be learning shortly and a lot more coming after that. That'll help with adoption and everything. And of course, we will be including most of this in our free tier with the unlimited version for our subscribers. So yeah, stay tuned. We're very excited. Um, and we're very excited to use Elgora to power some of the really cool things that we're bringing in in the new year. Thank you, Phenomenal. We're very excited for you as well. And uh, wishing you happy growth and a lot of prosperity in 2024 and beyond. Thank you so much for joining me. It's January 3rd, 2024. This has been Lucas, co-founder and CTO of Documenso. 